Okay, welcome to part seven. We're going to derive the descent time along a hypocycloid. Well, before we do that, we need some equations. We need the results of part four video, derivation of the hypocycloid equations in X and Y. This is X and this is Y below. Phi is equal to K times theta and K is equal to A minus B divided by B. We also need the results of part six video derive the velocity along the hypocycloid, which is listed below. We also need the results of part five video, derivation of the hypocycloid arc length. And this is the equation we use to derive the arc length. Let's get started. Okay, more equations. For the x and the y, we need r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And large r is equal to the radius from the center of the Earth to the surface of the Earth. Small r is equal to the radius from the center of the Earth to the hypocycloid. And b is equal to the radius of the rolling circle. Here's our equation we use to derive the time. We plug this video, which we plug the velocity into this equation, and we get this result, and we factor out r divided by g, square root of r divided by g. Then we have r squared is x squared plus y squared. So let's square x. Here's x, we square it. Here's y, we square it. So r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Here's x, here's y. And we plug into r squared. We do some simplification. And we find that these terms, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, and cosine squared k theta plus sine squared k theta, they're both equal to 1. So we plug those in, and we have another identity. Cosine theta times cosine k theta minus sine theta times sine k theta. And we're going to let cosine theta plus k theta equal that result. And we plug into there. But we let also, cosine theta plus k theta equal 1 minus 2 sine squared u. And we know that cosine 2u is also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared u. So we're going to need this a little bit later. So let's remember that. Okay, so our r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's equal to the result where we plugged in cosine theta plus k theta, we plugged in 1 minus 2 sine squared u, right there. There's our last equation. So now we do some simplification. So we have r, r minus b squared plus b squared times r times the quantity 2br minus 2b squared times 1 minus 2 sine squared u. Okay, and now we do some simplification. And we find all of these terms cancel out in red. And so in blue, we just multiply by minus 2. Here's our previous equations. Here's our simplified terms. This is this, and r squared is equal to this. So we just plug that in. Simplify. Here's our previous equation. Simplifying terms. Factoring out. 
See, we factored out square root of this right there. There's our previous equation. See, there's our previous equation. See, results of part five, the derivation of the hypercycloid arc length. Well, this is the part of part five. And that's what part five yielded right there. Okay. So part five yielded this. So this in red yields that in blue. And we're going to take that in blue and substitute it here in the red. Which yields this. That's why I had to do this in separate videos because it was so much calculations. Okay, let's get continue. Plug it into previous equation and sine u over sine u is 1. So that leaves the integral from 0 to u of du which gives u from a to b. Our limits, a to b. Okay, now to alleviate this square root, we multiply it by Square root over square root. And we get this to cancel out the two reds. Leave that result. We square RE and move it under the square root sign. Then we cancel an RE. Remember where cosine 2U equals 1 minus 2 sine, sine squared U? We said we need that later. And we also let cosine theta plus k theta equal that. Well, that means 2u is equal to theta plus k theta. Now we can solve for u. And k is equal to that. So therefore, u is equal to theta over 2 divided by r sub e divided by b. And then we plug that in for u. And now we look at our limit. Our lower limit is zero, and our upper limit is at the first cusp from, from zero, which is 2 pi over b over re. So therefore, we plug that in for theta. Everything cancels. And the simplifying, so the time to descend the hypercycloid is equal to 2 pi b b divided by r large e times the square root of r e divided by b times the quantity r e minus b divided by g. Let's continue. Okay, using the distance between cities to derive the time. Well, we start with the times to descend the cycle, and we do some simplification. And we end up with this. And we see that the distance between cities is equal to 2 pi times b, the radius of a rolling circle. Well, we substitute s in there. s is equal to distance between the cities. And there's our time. OK, now we want to use R, the center of the Earth to the bottom of the hypocycloid. Well, we start with our original time. We simplify. We let R minus 2B equal small r. Okay, the radius of the Earth minus 2B equals small r. And we solve for B. That gives us R minus large R minus small r divided by 2 equals B. So everywhere there's a B, we substitute this equation. Everywhere there's a B, there's a B here, a B here, and a B here. So we substitute that equation. We do some simplification. Therefore, there's our time. So, the summary of descent times. Time to descend a hypercycloid, that was our first time. 
time to descend the hypocycloid using S as our second. And time to descend the hypocycloid using small r from the center of the earth to the bottom of the hypocycloid is this equation. Finally, some animations. Click the links below to use to see the use of these equations. In the comments below, I have high speed travel between cities. You can click that link and you can see how these equations are used in some animations. And then you click the second link, hypocycloids, and you can see various hypocycloids from on the internet in action. Okay, that brings us to the end of part seven, the rather than send time along the hypocycloid. It's not magic, it's the law. Until next time, I hope you learned something.